Hello and welcome to this episode of The Burns Guide. In this analysis we'll be looking at the second Melee poem, Poor Melee's Elegy. First we'll read the poem and then look in detail at the poem's craft, context and resonance. Lamenting rhyme, lamenting prose, we sought tears trickling down your nose. Our bardies fate is at a close past all remed, the last sad cape stain of his woes, poor Melee's deed. It's no the loss of world's gear that could say bitter draw the tear, or mak our bardy dewy wear the morning weed. He's lost a friend, a neighbour dear, in Melee deed. Through all the tune she trotted by him, a lang half mile she could descry him, we kindly bleat when she did spy him, she ran we speed, a friend mere faithful ne'er came nigh him than Melee deed. I wot she was a sheep of sense, and could behave herself we mens. I'll say it, she never brack a fence through thievish greed. Her bardy lanely keeps the spence, sin Melee's deed. Or if he wanders up the hoo, her living image in her you comes bleating to him, o'er the new, for bits he breed, and doon the briny perils rue for Melee deed. She was nae get a moorland tups, we totted ket and hairy hips, for her forebears were brocht in ships frae on the tweed, a bonnier fleece ne'er crossed the clips than Melee's deed. Way worth the man who first did shape that vile one chancy thing, a rape, it marks good fellas gurn and gape wi choking dread, and Robin's bonnet wave wi crape for Melee deed. O oh, all ye bards on bonny doon, and wha on air your chanters tune, come, join the melancholious croon o' Robin's reed. His hair will never get a boon, his Melee's deed. Looking at the first stanza, we see the poem is written in the standard habi, using an AAA BAB rhyming scheme. The form will be discussed further in the context of our analysis, as this was Barnes's first attempt at the stanzaic form. Burns's mock elegy begins with his overly sensational call for his departed sheep to be immortalised in rhyme and prose. Much of the poem's humour stems from what Weston describes as the ridiculous disproportion between sentiment and its object. The joke here, in other words, is on Burns himself and his exaggerated grief over the death of Maley, his pet sheep. Maley's name features in the refrain at the end of each stanza to continually comically remind us of the object of Burns's outrageous grief. The rhyming of Ramid with dead informs our reading to use the Scots pronunciation deed, which will continue throughout the poem. The second stanza moves towards genuine affection, the emphasis landing on the emotive words of the stanza, such as bitter and loss, conveying the pain, but also friend and neighbour, conveying the love and affection. He insists he is not lamenting his loss of property or investment, but rather his loss of a dear friend. In the third stanza, Burns paints a picture of the tenderness of the affection they held for one another. His choice of words, such as trotted, kindly, and faithful, reinforce this. She is again described as the poet's lost friend, tempering the comedy with pathos. Burns vouches in this next stanza for her good character, describing her as a sheep of sense, further humanising her. He informs us, she was mannerly and unselfish, and never broke boundary fences or stole. Burns describes himself here for the third time in the poem as bardy, the term bard meaning a national poet. The diminutive bardy, or wee bard, is a term Burns modestly adopted from Robert Ferguson. As Crawford notes, it is also a pun, meaning bolshy or brash. This assertion that he possesses bardic qualities shows Burns' growing in poetic confidence and learning to self-style himself. In the next stanza, Burns further humanises Melee with the idea of the family she has left behind and the resemblance of her ewe lamb, who likewise comes running over to him to be met with a tearful Burns. This next stanza helps to provide context to both the Melee poems. Melee's ancestors came from England, beyond the River Tweed. She was of good breeding, of improved sheep stock, she was therefore a valuable and prized asset. The idea of a sheep having good lineage further provides humour. This is emphasised in the rhyming of brocht and ships, evocative of high and noble purposes, with cross the clips, sounding out the humble shearing of sheep. 
In the penultimate stanza, Burns curses the device that allegedly had Maley meet her maker, the rope tether upon which she mortally entangled herself. Burns compares her death to the death of innocent men hanged at the gallows and waves his hat in mourning. In the final stanza, he calls for all the bards on the banks of the River Dune in Ayrshire to lament the loss of his pet sheep, bringing the poem back circularly to its opening and giving it a sense of finality. He tells us that his heart is broken and will never recover from the loss. As we explored in the Burns Guide analysis of To a Mouse, Burns was farming at a time of great agricultural change in Scotland. The improvers looked to reform many of the old systems that were prevalent across the country. However, one of the greatest innovations in Scottish agriculture was the introduction and crossbreeding of sheep to create new breeds that produced better meat and wool. We know from an omitted stanza, Mealy was from a new improved stock of Fairley sheep, bred by Ayrshire improver Alexander Fairley. She would have been an expensive purchase for Burns, who was dipping his toe into the waters of agricultural improvement. Looking at this omitted stanza, we can see that Burns had agricultural ambitions that were perhaps beyond his abilities in animal husbandry. The verse was presumably left out because of its clash with the earlier sentiment of the poem, that the grief is one of affection, not the loss of Worrell's gear. From a poetic standpoint, poor Maley's elegy alludes heavily to Robert Ferguson's elegy on the death of Mr David Gregory. Burns, upon discovering the works of Robert Ferguson in 1784, started writing poetry with a newfound vigour, seeking to kindle at the flame of the Edinburgh poet. He related to Ferguson's jovial character, his poverty and depressive episodes, but above all to his natural inclination towards the Scots vernacular. He discovered from Ferguson the bardic qualities which he sought to emulate, and a rollicking colloquialism that seemed best at home in the standard habby. Poor Maley's Elegy was Burns' first poem in the form, named after an earlier poem elegizing Habby Simpson, the Piper of Kilbarkin. It has subsequently been termed the Burns Stanza. He became so closely associated with the form. Many of Burns's finest poems are written in the standard Habby. Poor Maley's Elegy adopts also from Ferguson's earlier David Gregory poem, Elements of Tone, which juxtaposed genuine sympathy and flattery with well-intentioned playful mockery, both of its subject and self-reflexively the eulogiser themself. The tone helps to find light, laughter and life in the face of death. Nowhere can this be seen more clearly than in this omitted stanza to poor Maley's elegy. She was nae get a runted rams, we woo like goats and legs like trams, she was the fleur of fairly lambs, a famous breed, new robin greeting, choose the hams, o Maley deed. This poem shows Burns asserting himself for the first time as the bard, finding his feet in a tradition of Scots poetry that he would come to the pinnacle of. It was his first encounter with the stanza that he would come to effortlessly master, to the extent that it would become known as the Burns stanza. The poem fused traditional elements of Scots elegy with a new overarching irony and breathed life not only into this particular national poetic tradition, but into the loving memory of Maley, helping to overcome his own dark despair that anyone who has ever lost a loving pet can well understand. This poem was written to be read alongside and provide context to the death and dying words of Maley. Follow the link to find the Burns Guide reading and analysis of the earlier Maley poem here. <laughs>